Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember, the phone lines are open at 559-656-0317. You can call that number or text that number with any insurance-related question. We will jump on that call, get you on the air, and do the best we can to answer your question. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. We will also get those questions up as soon as we can. We have somebody checking that email while the show is going and after hours as well. Let us know if you'd like us to actually uh, say who you are or just ask your question. Same thing, if you call the phone number and somebody answers, great. If not, there's a voicemail. Be sure to leave your message there. Be sure to tell us if you want us to play your call on the air or just answer your question. Either way, we will do as you wish. Today, we are going to be talking about homeowners insurance and auto insurance. We're going to talk about the different types of coverage that's available, and we're going to go over some FAQs, frequently asked questions. And I can tell you, after 30 years of doing this, I know those frequently asked questions. I hear them all the time. Some are good, some you might find amusing. All of them are good information and good pieces of information for you to have when you're deciding what to do with your personal auto insurance, your personal homeowner's insurance when it comes to coverage, shopping, claims, discounts, you name it, we're going to cover it here. Remember again, uh, you can reach us at 559-656-0317. And with that, let us jump right in and talk about homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance is basically a coverage that is a type of policy that's designed to protect your home. Now, for the sake of this conversation, we're going to talk about a single family home, a structure, not a duplex, not a triplex, not a fourplex, not an apartment building. We're not even going to be talking about condominium owners policies. We'll cover that in another show. And we're not going to talk about renters insurance policies, which again, we can cover in another show. We're talking specifically about what do they call it? The good old American dream, a single family home with the white picket fence, all that good stuff. That's what we're going to be covering when we're talking about it. So when you hear me referring to homeowner's insurance policy or your home policy, understand that we're referring to that. Single family home, period, and of course, this is important, and you live there. That's a fair point to start in right away. When you hear about homeowner's insurance, there are certain assumptions that go into place. And when I say assumptions, I'm talking about assumptions that most insurance companies are making. A homeowner's insurance policy, one of the primary assumptions that's being made is that you live there. The owner of the property lives there. Now, there are other policies that will cover a single family home if you do not live there, if you rent it out, if there's a tenant there, if it's an Airbnb, if it's a short-term rental, whatever it might be. But homeowner's insurance by generic, you know, slang type of name, that's going to refer to a single family home that the owner of the property lives in. That's important because what will happen sometimes is you might purchase the home and then rent it out and forget that you really have to change the insurance policy that you have on the home. Remember, homeowners insurance policies are designed for the owner to be living in the home. When I say design, understand again that that doesn't necessarily just mean that the coverages are tailored for, it means that if there is not the owner of the property living there, the potential for coverage not being in place or for all coverage types to be denied do exist. Not a loophole, a contract. Remember, homeowners insurance policies are contracts between consumers and an insurance company. And if you read the policy, homeowners insurance policies assume that the owner of the policy is going to be living in the home. So remember, if you do own a policy and a home and you rent it out or you make changes to anything along the lines of who's living there, Talk to your agent or broker, talk to the insurance company and find out what changes you might need to make to that policy. Don't just assume, well, it's the same home. The occupancy type makes a difference as well. I see this happen with some level of frequency and it's not anything that's done maliciously. People don't necessarily think about it. And that's one of the reasons I wanna make, I make such a point about it right now that it does matter who lives in the home, okay? Now, homeowners insurance policies are designed to cover the structure of the home, the insides of the home, things that are around the home, and the owner of the home. 
All of those things are covered in different types of the homeowner's insurance policy. And I'm going to try and go through each one of those with you so that you know. Some of these you're going to be more familiar with because you see them on what's called the declaration sheet, the deck sheet. That's the one front page of your insurance policy that lists things that are unique to you. There's going to be your name, the address, the effective day, the premium, the limit of coverage for the different types of coverage on the homeowner's policy, the things that are unique to your policy. Now, an insurance company doesn't create a new policy for every single person every single time they buy a policy. There is the actual policy jacket, which is the real meat and potatoes of the policy. It talks about when claims are going to be paid. It talks about warranties, which is a type of promise that you are making regarding that policy. For example, most homeowners insurance policies, or maybe I can say some, the majority of them will warranty, basically you are promising certain things are going to be part of what you are bringing to the table. Meaning, again, we'll go back to it, you are living there. Some policies will specifically say, if there is nobody living in the home for a specific period of time, sometimes it's 30 days, sometimes it's 60 days, types of coverage will start to fall off of the policy. That's important, that's significant. So once again, not just who's living there, that somebody living there is an important part of a homeowner's insurance policy. So again, we're talking about the structure of the house, we're talking about the stuff on the inside, stuff around the house, and the owner of the house. Now we're gonna talk about what each of those different types of coverages are called, the limits, what they're supposed to be used for. We're gonna take a break and when we come back, I'm gonna go through each of those and then I'm going to go through each of them in a little bit of detail for you to understand. Because again, one of the things that I find over, over the years is that there's a misunderstanding about what a homeowner's insurance policy is designed to cover. People have a sort of generic feeling that, well, it's a homeowner's policy, it covers my home, period. And there's so much more than that. There are so many nuances that are involved. You might have things you could have put a claim in for and you don't. You might have things you assume are covered and they're not. We're going to talk about all of those things as soon as we come back. Meanwhile, remember, the phone lines are open, so give us a call at 559-656-0317 or send in an email to questions at insurancehour.com. And guess what? You can also text that same phone number, 559-656-0317. Ask your question, whatever you'd like. Some people like the texting thing. Totally cool. We're good with that. Just reach out. Let us know what we can do for you. And as always, and I'll say this now, and I love to say it again, if you hear something I'm saying that doesn't make sense or you think you've heard information to the contrary, please let me know because my goal is to give you the most up-to-date and accurate information that I can. I'm Carl Sussman, and you're learning from Insurance Hour. Be right back. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when, they can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it, prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello, this is Carl Sussman and you are learning from Insurance Hour. We are here. Give us a call at 559-656-0317. You can call that number, you can text that number, whatever you please, and we would love to talk to you, find out your insurance-related questions, and hopefully answer them for you. Today we are focusing on homeowners insurance policies and automobile insurance policies. Before the break, we were talking about what homeowners policies cover. And I'm going to run through those quickly and then we're going to start digging in deep. Homeowners insurance policies are going to cover the structure of the house, personal property, your stuff inside the house, things that are around the house, and the owner of the house. Let's dig into each of those. 
The first thing homeowners insurance policies cover, and we assume this much, is the structure, right? It's going to cover replacing the, the actual structure itself to rebuild it. I'm going to use the parallel of fire, since that's the primary focus of most policies, it's to cover it for the damage caused by fire. The first thing you have to decide is, what is it going to cost to rebuild your home in the event of a fire? Fair enough. Who determines who, what the amount to replace the home is going to be? This is a complicated question because it doesn't matter what time it is, it doesn't matter what day it is, it doesn't matter anything about when the loss happens, the number is going to be different. What it's going to cost for you to rebuild that home is going to vary based on multiple factors. I'll give you an example. If there's a fire and it's in your kitchen and it damages your home and your home needs to be rebuilt from scratch, it's going to cost a certain amount of money. Now, if all of a sudden there's a wildfire and half your block goes down or worse, now all of a sudden there's going to be a shortage of contractors, there's going to be a shortage of labor, there's going to be a shortage of workers, the price to rebuild is going to do what? It's going to go up. So these are other factors that we can't possibly know when we're writing a homeowner's insurance policy or when you're purchasing a homeowner's insurance policy. How do you know when the loss is going to happen and what those types of expenses and costs might be? Talking about expenses, one of the other things that a homeowner's insurance policy typically will cover is the cost for you to move out during the time that work is being done on your home. And guess what? If it's just your house, Okay, that's going to be a particular time when hotels or wherever you might be moving for a period of time are going to charge you X number of dollars. But now, again, major disaster strikes, you might be looking at the entire neighborhood trying to find lodging. What is that going to do to the cost of lodging? It's going to go way up again. So there are factors that we cannot know when a policy is initially written with, with regard to what those costs are going to be. So what do we do? Well, we have to go based on some generic terms in general. The homeowner, meaning the owner of the property, us, has to know to some extent, what is it going to cost to rebuild our home? Where do we get that information, right? We're not contractors, we're homeowners. We can look at the appraisal for our home when we purchased it, that's a great way to start. We can have an appraisal done of our home if we like, that's another great way to do it. Or we can turn around and ask our neighbors that have similar homes, we can say, look, your home looks similar to mine. What are you insuring it for? Do you have an idea? Do you have a friend that's a contractor or an architect? Try and feel out the area, feel out people that have similar homes near you and get an idea what their replacement value is. On top of that, something else that you can do is use what are called cost estimators. Now, there is no shortage of cost estimators on the market. There are, <laughs> I can think of half a dozen off the top of my head. And a cost estimator is a program, it's a computer program that will ask you a series of questions and based on your answers, it's going to give you an estimate of what it believes the replacement cost for your home is going to be. Okay, you've heard the expression garbage in, garbage out? Well, it's the same thing with these programs. The less detail you put in, the more generic your answers are. Let's use an example. What percentage of the house has carpet? What percentage of the house has wood floor, what percentage of the house has tile, right? I couldn't tell you that with any real accuracy for my own home, so I doubt you would be able to either. Those are factors that will go into the replacement cost, so I can do my best, right? If it asks you, is your kitchen standard, average, premium, or supreme? What does that mean? Well, what it means to me might mean something different to you. And guess what, if you're putting those other factors into that computer program, you're going to get different results coming out. So what do you do? Well, you're going to go to an agent or a broker or an insurance carrier for a little assistance as well. Now, they're going to do similar things to what you're doing. They're going to have their own replacement cost estimating tools. And hopefully, the licensed agent or broker is going to ask you some of those questions and try and help you sort of work through the process to get more accurate information than not, right? They might say, okay, you don't have to know the exact percentage, but when it says premium kitchen or standard kitchen, they're talking about things like built-in appliances, they're talking about upgraded ovens, is it, you know, your house was built in the 60s, is it the same kitchen stove that, you know, the house had back then, or have you updated it with more modern materials and, and equipment? They'll try and help navigate you through that. And insurance carriers will do that as well. They will send you forms that you can fill out that will give additional information that will explain how you can try and determine what the replacement cost of your home is. Now, 
What else can happen is an insurance carrier has the option and they will discuss this with you and or your insurance agent or broker should, of course, with you as well. They have the option to send out an inspector and decide, and depending on the size of your home, sometimes that will be mandatory. Larger homes, because they vary so much in what they cost to rebuild, are going to require an in person inspection to decide what the actual replacement cost is going to be. Now, before you freak out and get annoyed and say, oh, they're just going to send somebody out that's going to try and make it higher to charge more premium. Keep something in mind. When there's a loss, you want to be able to point to the insurance company and say, hey, you guys came out, you looked, you knew what was here. This is the amount you chose to insure it for. That puts you in a very strong position to be sure that you have sufficient coverage to rebuild your home. I've seen it happen time and time again. There's not enough coverage. There's not enough coverage. Well, the insurance carrier says, well, we insured what the client asked for. We follow the computer estimators that the information from the client that provided to us. And again, that's not an exact science. Personally, I would love to have an inspector come out and inspect my house because what that does for me is give me the ability to say, okay, now the onus is on you because you sent somebody out to look at my home. You know what it's going to cost to rebuild. You're the experts. And on that, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to move on from the replacement cost of the structure, some additional caveats that are involved in there and talk about some of the other types of insurance that uh, coverage types that are available on homeowners insurance policies. Once again, this is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. Call that number, text that number with any insurance-related question. We'll get right back to you. Of course, always email as well at info, I'm sorry, questions at insurancehour.com. And we'll get those questions answered for you as well. Stand by, we will be back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open, and the person is waiting to answer your calls, your insurance-related queries. Give us a call at 559-656-0317. You can call that number. You can text that number, whatever you like. Also, you can send your questions in by email to questions at insurancehour.com. We will read those. They will be read in my ear over this little hidden earphone. And I will answer those questions for you right now as well. If you're calling in and you're getting voicemail, leave a message. Ask your question. Give us as much detail as you want. And also, please let us know. Do you want us to play your question on the air? Or do you just want us to generically read the question and answer it? We want to make sure that people are comfortable. Some people want to be on the radio and TV and YouTube. Some people, well, they don't. Before the break, we were talking about how to determine replacement cost for homeowners insurance policies. It's very important because it's a primary portion of your homeowners insurance policy. You wanna be sure you have enough coverage to rebuild your home in the event of a loss, right? That's sort of the whole point. We have inspections that can be done of your home. We have information that consumers can put into estimators and agents and brokers and insurance companies also have their own estimators. All of this information, all of these options put together is what is utilized to be able to determine the replacement cost of your home. I wish I could say it's an exact science because it really, really would be better if it was, but unfortunately it's not. So again, as we mentioned earlier, if you do not have sufficient coverage, let's say you did everything correct. Maybe even an inspector came out to your home, inspected your home, came up with a replacement cost amount, 
and it wasn't enough. There's something called extended replacement cost, of course. Extended replacement cost is a little cushion that a lot of homeowners insurance policies will offer because they want to be sure that just in case maybe your loss happened during that time period when there was there were major losses going on and you're stuck in that situation where things are costing more than would normally be the case, you have that little cushion. Extended replacement cost means they're going to insure, they're going to pay out a percentage above the amount you're insured for. Sometimes 10, sometimes 25, 50%. It depends on the insurance company. If your home is insured for 500,000 and they're going to pay 50% above, they'll pay 750,000, et cetera, things like that. There's a history for how those percentages came in. Well, I won't insurance nerd out with you too much right now about it, but it's an interesting story, suffice it to say. What's important is do the best you can when you're determining the replacement cost for your home, because when the time comes and you need the coverage, you will be glad you took that extra time to answer those questions, be as detailed and accurate as you can. That is what we call dwelling coverage on a homeowner's insurance policy. It's also known as coverage A, structure A. Now, I also told you that homeowner's insurance policies will cover things that are around your house. Well, what the heck does that mean? That will be covered under what's called other structure. Now, other structure coverage could be something as obvious and simple as a garage that's not attached to your house. Simple enough. It might also be a pool. Okay, asterisk. Pool is not a structure. Why would it be covered under other structure? Anything that's not attached to the house can fall under other structure. This is where policies get a little bit unique. Landscaping, for example, can also fall under other structure. Check your policy because there are certain sublimits that do apply, meaning they're not going to spend an indefinite amount of money on one tree, for example. There might be sublimits for that. I've seen situations where people have basically Disneyland in their backyard and there's a loss and they expect that other coverage protection to protect them for everything. Well, first remember, other structure is a dollar amount that is assigned. It also typically does not have that additional buffer, that 50%, 20%, that extended replacement cost. It's just the amount listed. As the, res, as the consumer, we get to select how much other structure coverage we get. If we don't select it, the insurance company will default typically to 10% of whatever the dwelling is insured for, your house, your coverage A, or 20%. It just depends on the insurance company, but it's something you should be paying attention to because it does impact your premium and, as important, it does impact what coverage you have. For example, if you have a big fancy pool, you have a koi pond, you have expensive trees, you have a ton of landscaping, you have a gazebo, you have perhaps built-in uh, grilling equipment, things like that. You can tell I'm not much of a chef. Couldn't even think of the word. You have expensive things, okay? You wanna be sure that you have sufficient coverage in your other structure coverage to cover those items. And be sure that the particular policy you're looking at will provide coverage for those items. Other structure protection could also be something as massive as another house, an actual other structure. Sometimes referred to as a granny house, which I think is a little bit nasty, but uh, maybe it's going to be a small house that's built on your property that somebody else might be living in. Put an asterisk on that because that can also impact the particular type of policy you have. You might want to talk to your agent about that. But in general, if you have any type of other structure, you want to pay attention to what that limit of coverage is that you have on your policy and what it entails. Other structure coverage is probably one of the most overlooked coverages that I will come across. People don't know what it is. They don't know why it is. They don't know why they need it. They don't realize that if it's not another house on their property, it still can cover things. Again, like a pool, a spa. Um, It can, like I said, grilling equipment. I should come up with something else. You get the idea. These are things that are on your property that are of significant value. If they're not physically attached to the house, then you'd want to look to see how much other coverage you have for that. Some people might have an extremely expensive retaining wall, okay? That's not attached to your house necessarily. Find out if that could be covered under your other structure coverage. They don't come cheap, not by a long shot. So we've talked about the structure coverage and we call that dwelling. We call that coverage A. 
Anybody want to guess what we call other structure coverage? Come on. I know. It's just me here right now. Other coverage stru- other structure coverage we refer to in the industry as coverage B. And remember, it will default to usually 10 or 20% of your coverage A unless you decide to increase that limit. It's going to be time to talk about some other types of homeowners coverage. We'll get to those right after the break. Remember, if you miss any part of this, just jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us uh, as a podcast on YouTube pretty much everywhere, and you can get caught up with all the information that we're talking about. Once again, phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can phone or text, or you can email your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. Once again, Insurance Hour, your host, Carl Sussman. That is I, that is me, that is moi. We will be back after a quick break. Thanks again. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your previous insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or maybe they just raised your premium to an amount that you simply can't afford? Whatever the situation, we can help. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote and we will connect you with an agent who can assist you right away. Or if you prefer, you can visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Whether you're looking for homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, we'll send the best options straight to you. So what are you waiting for? Simply dial pound 250 and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with a live agent to help provide competitive quotes for your homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. Don't get caught unprepared. Ensure what matters with an insurance company you can trust and with a premium that you can afford. Don't put off until tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. Simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can call that number, you can text that number with any insurance related question. We wanna hear from you. We wanna answer your questions. Remember, if you have a question, chances are somebody else has that same question as well. You can also email us with your questions at questions at insurancehour.com. Let us know in your email if you want us to read your name or just the question online. Similarly, if you're calling in and our and the phone is not being answered, maybe it's after hours or we're just too busy and you get a voicemail, Leave a detailed voicemail. Let us know what your question is and let us know if you want to have your question read on the air. Because again, I don't want to embarrass anyone. And at the same time, some people really want to be on the air. So let us know. Before the break, we were talking about homeowner's insurance. If you've missed any part of this show, a lot of information in here that you want to have. Check us out. Just jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us as a podcast. You'll find us on YouTube. You'll find us on iHeartRadio. You'll find us on Amazon Alexa. Yes, you can actually go to your Alexa and ask it to play insurance hour. It's kind of crazy, but you can do that these days. So we were talking about homeowners insurance and the different types of coverage that can come with homeowners policies. We've talked about dwelling coverage, which we called coverage A. We talked about other structure coverage, which we learned is a lot more than a structure as coverage B. And now we're moving on to the next one, which is your stuff your personal property, your things, the stuff that's not in the house when you buy it that is there shortly after you move in. Another way I like to look at personal property coverage is to say if you rip off your roof, great image, if you rip off the roof and shake, if it falls out, it's personal property. I know, it's a horrible image, but that's the best way for you to understand personal property. Notice that there are a lot of things that you might do in the house that don't fall out, Those are not considered personal property on a homeowner's policy. Those would be part of dwelling coverage. And yes, I'm talking about the expensive counters. I'm talking about all the built-in appliances. It might feel like personal property, but if it doesn't fall out when you shake, 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 then you're going to more than likely find that being covered under your structure coverage, your dwelling coverage, A, not your personal property. Okay, asterisk done. Let's talk about personal property. Personal property is has certain sublimits in it, actually quite a few of them. Now, sometimes people don't realize that these exist and they feel like they're being cheated or they don't know, it's not fair. Now, if you and I bought the same home, the exact same home, it's a model home, we would be able to assume with some level of accuracy that the cost to rebuild it is going to be pretty similar, right? It's the same home. Now, maybe I love guns and I love artwork and I have a lot of expensive computer equipment. 
And let's just say I also have a stamp collection. I also, I sort of see things going downhill in this country, so I keep a lot of cash on hand. That's my personal property collection, if you want to look at it, in general. Now, you, you're different. You don't believe in any of that stuff. You hate guns. You don't carry cash around. You do everything on credit. You're a different, you're a minimalist, okay? All you have is your laptop. That is it. You've got your laptop. You've got your earphones. That's all you have. And again, we're talking in generalities. You can imagine that my home is going to have a lot of stuff. Your home, not so much stuff. So how does an insurance company know how much personal property is in a house? How do they know? When you're first purchasing that policy, when we're going to an insurance agent or broker and we're saying, insure my home, does the insurance agent or broker usually say, how much stuff do you have? Well, a good one might ask you certain questions and we'll get to that in a moment. But for the most part, the insurance company is going to be focused on the structure because what's inside the house might vary from day to day, from month to month. You might start collecting things. Let's face it, when you first moved in, did you have less things than you have right now? Probably, you probably add things as you go. Personal property, usually, if we make no changes to it, will come as a percentage of that dwelling coverage again. So again, if we're looking at a dwelling that's insured for a million dollars, most homeowners insurance policies will give you a percentage of that in addition for personal property. It might be 50%, meaning if your home is insured for a million dollars, they will say you get 500,000 more for personal property. Some might say 60%, 70%. It just depends on the insurance company. Again, this is why you need to be sure that you look at your policy, read it, ask questions. Now, here's where it can get a little bit messy. People, I, I deal with this daily. So please, please listen to this. Just because you have, let's just use a nice round, simple number, $100,000 in personal property, that does not mean that everything in your house is covered up to $100,000. Because again, think of those two homes that we talked about, my home versus your home. All I have is my computer and my air and my uh, earphones. You have guns, you have stamps, you have cash, you have computers, you have artwork, you have all these other things. The insurance carrier has no way of knowing that unless we tell them, of course. So there are limits within personal property that we have to be aware of. And those limits will give you a maximum amount that they will pay for certain types of items. You wanna guess? A lot of them are these items I was saying that I have in my house for this example. Guns, stamps, cash, artwork, jewelry, fine arts, computers, electronics. It's a long list. And the list is different for every insurance company. But what I can almost guarantee you is every carrier will have some type of list. Now, this does not mean you cannot get coverage for those items. It means you have to be proactive and say, I've got this stuff, how do I get it covered? And you need to go through the process with your insurance agent or broker or company and find out, can you raise the sublimit for the particular items you're looking to get coverage for? or you have to purchase a separate small policy to insure just those items. Jewelry is a big one. How in the world can an insurance company know that I might have a $25,000 engagement ring? How can they know that? They can't. If you tell them, a good agent or broker or carrier will say, well, okay, the policy is only going to pay $1,500 unless we do something X, Y, and Z to cover that item. So. Chances are, if you make the effort and you will tell the carrier or your agent or your broker what you have, hey, they make money selling insurance, they're going to tell you, A, it's either covered, okay, you're good, or they're going to say, if you want to get that covered, we have to do something else. That's important, and I can't stress that enough. The amount of coverage you see on that page under personal property does not mean any one item can be up to that limit. You need to read your policy or ask questions and understand what those sublimits are and what type of property, what type of personal property is going to be covered under those sublimits, okay? I'm going to talk some more when we come back for another quick break. Questions, don't forget, give us a call, 559-656-0317 or email questions at insurancehour.com. Before the break, though, I have to end on the right note. We talked about dwelling coverage, A. We talked about other structure coverage, B. We're talking about personal property coverage. Anybody want to guess? Uh, yep, C. 
Personal property falls under coverage C. And with that, let us take another quick break and we will be back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open and they are ringing. Give us a call, 559-656-0317. If you do not want to call, you want to text, we can do that as well. Text us at 559-656-0317. Yes, the same phone number, call or text. Or if you're an email type of person, go ahead, send that email to questions at insurancehour.com. We will answer your questions here. Anything insurance related, I will do my best to answer your question. I will give you this disclaimer like I do so often. My goal is to provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information that I can. If you're hearing something that you think is simply wrong or you've heard information to the contrary, please let me know and let me research it and let me find out if something has changed that I'm not aware of. I'm not perfect. I do the best that I can. I do keep up with things to the best of my ability, but there might be an occasion where something has changed that I have not been made aware of. I want to know that. I want to find out so I can update everyone so they can have the most up-to-date and accurate information. With that, we are talking about homeowner's insurance. We talked about the dwelling coverage, which we called coverage A. We talked about the other structure coverage, which is not just structures, as coverage B. And we talked about personal property coverage, which we said is coverage C. There are our ABCs, but yet there is more. I have to just say it again with personal property. Again, if you missed that segment, please jump online, search for Insurance Hour, find this show, and listen to the section about insur- about personal property and sublimits. It's so, so, so important. Okay, now we've talked about those three things. What is next on a homeowner's insurance policy? Well, let's draw a little picture. You're in your home, there's a loss, you need to move out, right? Well, guess what? There is coverage called loss of use or additional living expenses, depends, that the insurance company has on your policy, most policies, to be able to have you move out and live somewhere while they are doing repairs on your home for a covered loss. Follow that now. This is not just going to pay for you to go to Hawaii. This is not just going to pay for you to have a staycation. This is going to pay for you to be away while they're doing work to repair your home after a covered loss. Sounds obvious, but I've heard it. Well, I have coverage for uh, for moving out. Can't I put a, you know, can't I claim that now? Did you have a claim? No. Was there a loss? No, but I have this coverage. Doesn't work that way. This is only after a covered loss. Okay. Now, How does that work? There are usually two ways that insurance companies will give coverage for you to have this, let's call it additional living expense, because that really makes a little more sense to most people. Your expense to live somewhere else. Now, it's done in one of two ways. One is by a dollar amount. And that dollar amount is, again, back to the coverage A, usually a percentage, unless you ask for more, that's given from your dwelling coverage. Dwelling coverage, right, is that coverage A. It's usually 20%. So again, houses insured for $100,000, they're going to give you $20,000 additional for your additional living expense. Now, they will also put a time limit on it. Typically, they'll say, well, you can have this amount and it'll be good for up to 12 months. If we don't get the house rebuilt by then, we're not gonna pay you know, indefinitely. Now, 
This is also one of the things that is the most misunderstood because people think, well, what if it takes longer than a year? Well, if it takes longer than a year, talk to your broker, talk to your agent, talk to your insurance company. If everything is being done as it should, I see with a lot, I see this almost all the time. Carriers are really good about that. If there's been a delay, if it just turns out that it is taking longer and you have not yet, ex you've not yet exhausted that entire dollar amount, they're usually pretty good about letting you use that coverage until you use it up, even if it takes longer than the stated amount. Don't hold me to this. It's not in the contract, but I can just tell you from my experience, that's not one I would lose a lot of sleep over. Because again, if everyone is acting in good faith, then typically that shouldn't be a problem. Now, you can also look to increase that amount if you say, you know what, that's not enough money because I have a larger house or if I want to move out, I want to make sure that I'm somewhere that's comparable and it might cost more money. Most of the time you can ask and have that limit raised above the typical 20% mark that it comes with. Not a problem. But again, you need to know, you need to ask. Now, other companies and other policies, instead of giving you a percentage as I'm describing of that 20% that you can look to increase. They'll say reasonable for a period of time. It might be reasonable cost for 12 months. It might be reasonable cost for 24 months. And they don't put a dollar amount on it, which is ooh, just looking for trouble, right? They're just looking for trouble. Now, how does that work? You're going to go and find a place to live that is comparable to where you are. If you have a three bedroom, two bath house, do not think you're going to be able to go somewhere and rent a house that is a six bedroom, five bath house. Because hey, any amount for two years or any amount for one year, it doesn't work that way. You're trying to find something that's comparable. Now, I like policies that will give you a period of time versus a dollar amount because it does offer flexibility. Remember we talked earlier, depending on when your loss happens, you might be in a position where it's hard to find lodging because everyone's looking for it. Versus if the loss is smaller and that doesn't impact the cost of getting a rental, you might not have to have higher amounts of coverage. But in general, if you have all things remaining the same, it's usually nice to look for the policy that will give you a length of time without a dollar amount versus a dollar amount and a length of time. It's just a little more flexibility. But again, as long as you're aware and as long as you understand what it is that you have, that's the most important thing. You make the informed decision. You decide what makes the most sense for you cost-wise. Does it make sense for you to have more or less? It's up to you, okay? But again, be aware of that coverage. That is your additional living expense coverage. So we've got dwelling. We've got other structure. We've got personal property. We've got additional living expense. Is it a Sesame Street reference if I say, but wait, there's more. I think so. I think that is the count. There is more. And we're going to talk about those other items on our final segment that's coming up now. If you have questions, meanwhile, please give us a call. 559-656-0317. You can call that number. You can text that number. We want to hear from you. You can also send an email in to questions at insurancehour.com. Get back to you right away. Also, let us know, do you want us to read your name on... Or do you want us to read your names, identify you in any way? Do you want us to put, if you leave a voicemail, your voicemail on? Or do you just want us to read the question? I want to be respectful of everyone's privacy. Some people really want to be on. Some people really don't. So if you can remember to let me know, that would be greatly appreciated. Dwelling, other structure, personal property, additional living expense. But wait, there's more. We will cover the additional items that you have as soon as we come back from our break. This is Insurance Hour. I am your happy host. Carl Sussman, you are learning from us today, hopefully as much as you possibly can. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will cover and round out typical coverages for homeowners insurance and tie it all up with a bow. We will be back in a flash. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we are prepared to leap. Looking under every rock, exploring every avenue, that's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, 
It's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Phone lines are still open at 559-656-0317. You can call that number. You can text that number. You can think really hard to it. We probably won't get that. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. We are in our final segment. We are talking about homeowner's insurance. You know, my goal was to talk about homeowner's insurance and auto insurance and frequently asked questions in today's show. I clearly did not uh, accomplish that. We are going to barely get through coverages for homeowner's insurance alone. So, excuse me, we will do auto insurance and frequently asked questions in another show. Sorry about that. Again, I want to try and get you as much information as I can. Remember, all of this is available online. Just search for insurancehour.com. It's available on all the streaming platforms. It's available on the radio. It's available on YouTube. We're pretty much everywhere. If you go to insurancehour.com, you'll find links to everything from TuneIn Radio to Amazon Alexa to iHeartRadio to Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's If you can't find this, you're doing something wrong. Just search for Insurance Hour. So we were talking about homeowners insurance. We talked about dwelling coverage. We talked about other structure coverage. We talked about personal property. We talked about additional living expense. Now we're going to talk about two other coverages and we have to do it a little bit fast because we're running out of time. The next one is medical payments. Okay, why do I need medical payments on my homeowner's policy? I have health insurance. Well, I'm going to give you a medical payment example because it's a true story happened to me and then you'll understand why. My niece was a little girl. She was at our house. She was running around. She tripped. She fell. She chipped a tooth. Now, it was a baby tooth, thank goodness, but she had to go to the special pediatrician. She had to get, you know, some work done on that tooth, even though the tooth was going to fall out. They did things, blah, 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 blah. It cost money. Now, does my sister want to sue me? No. Well, no. I'm going to say no. She doesn't. At the same time, does she want to out-of-pocket the expenses for this if she doesn't have to? Well, no. So there's something called medical payments that is on your homeowner's insurance policy. And what that does is just like it sounds. It will pay the medical bills for somebody that gets injured on your property. Not pain and suffering, not lost wages, just medical bills. So that's what we did in my case. My homeowner's insurance policy paid medical payments to my sister to pay for the pediatrician and the special uh, oral tooth for kids, doctor, I'm sure there's a name for that that I'm blowing, uh, and paid for that. Now, this used to be utilized a lot more because people weren't so sue happy. They weren't so eager to grab an attorney and try and make a lot of money on getting hurt. They just wanted their bills to be paid. So med pay is not used as often as it used to be. And that's why, because most people will go into our next type of coverage, And this will be the final coverage we talk about for homeowners insurance, which is liability insurance. Now, this is the big one. This is the granddaddy of them all, right? This is the coverage that's going to protect you from people that are suing you. Yes, this could have been someone else that came to my home that fell and got hurt and sued me for negligence. My liability insurance would then kick in to defend me and indemnify me potentially and all of these other things that would come into play. Homeowners policies will come if you select it with liability insurance, usually a limit of up from one, about 100000 all the way up to a million dollars. Check your policy. Your mileage may vary. Liability insurance is probably one of the most important types of coverage that you can get. It just is. If somebody sues you, you want to have liability coverage. If you've never been involved in litigation before, I can tell you, having seen it in many different angles, it is expensive It is time consuming. You want to have somebody that really knows what they're doing. You can't do it by yourself. Forget that. And you don't want to have to pay those bills if you don't have to. So be sure. I always recommend people take the highest limit of liability coverage that their homeowner's policy will actually offer and potentially even get additional coverage. Because again, in the United States and specifically in California, a lot, I shouldn't just blame poor California, but it, it happens in all states you will see a lot of litigation for things that 
in the past may have just been a medical payment claim. Having said that, not passing judgment, just stating facts, liability coverage is part of a homeowner's insurance policy typically, right? Again, these are all generic, right? Your mileage may vary. You always want to read your policy to be sure that the types of coverage that I'm talking about are there or are not there. And if they're not, find out if you want them or need them. And if they are, be sure the limits are appropriate to what it is that you're looking for. So we have dwelling, we have other structure, we have personal property, we have additional living expense, and we have the granddaddy liability insurance. I'll leave you with this little example about why I'm so big on liability insurance. If you had a fire and the house burned to the ground and you did not have any coverage, you would be left with a mortgage, likely, and dirt. Bad, very bad. Not the absolute end of the world, but very bad. If you don't have liability insurance and somebody sues you, they could not only put you into bankruptcy, but you could be in a position where your income, your wages are garnished, where you have to literally be paying off that debt indefinitely, in perpetuity. It's possible. I've heard of it happening. Both bad situations, but you can see how the liability insurance has potentially an unlimited exposure, whereas the structure coverage for your home, again, not minimizing it is horrible. You want to have your coverage, obviously, for your home, but it's limited to the damage that you would have from not having a home, which is significant, but not unlimited. Liability insurance is super, super important. We could do shows literally about nothing other than liability insurance and, and how important it is, why it's so important, how it's utilized. We probably will at some point because I think it's that important. So with that, we now have rounded out the basic core types of coverage that you will have on a homeowner's insurance policy. Dwelling, other structure, personal property, additional living expense, medical payments, liability. You've got them now. You probably have more information about what a homeowner's insurance policy covers than 90% of people that you know. This is stuff that you should know if you own a home, but most people do not. They think that it's boilerplate, one size fits all, it's all kind of the same, and you now realize there are so many more nuanced differences between policies, so many types of coverage that you need to pay attention to to be sure you have what you need and not just what you think you have, right? All right, with that, remember you can catch the show online. If you missed any of it, find us. Just search for Insurance Hour. Find it in an audio version. Find the video version if you really want to see me. Uh -huh. Go for it. This is Insurance Hour you have been learning from. I am your host, Carl Sussman. I thank you so much for being here. Phone lines will continue to be available, although they may not be manned. Give us a call, 559-656-0317. You can text that number as well. You can also email your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. I thank you so much for your time. I hope you learned a lot today and I look forward to the next time we chat. Take care. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 six five six zero three one seven educating and entertaining californians one insurance policy at a time this is insurance hour this show is dedicated to shamrock papa